everyone, it's Dr. Marco. Welcome to this week's health tip. So today I'm just going to kind of introduce something that we're really excited about having in the office. So it's a brand new technology that I've been really excited about and it's finally coming so we're going to organize it to try to figure it out. So it's a new um, analysis system that we have. It's called the, the right eye system. So uh, I'm going to explain a little bit about what this is and kind of give you an idea of how we're going to use it and integrate it. So if you, um, when we do a lot of our functional neurology work, kind of figuring out the brain, the eyes are the biggest, most important um, factor for determining the health of your brain. So if you guys think about this, when you're walking, okay, you're walking, your head's going up and down and everything, the amount of effort and accuracy it takes for your brain to keep your eyes steady while everything else is moving, it's super, super important that your brain works properly for your eyes to do what they need to do. So when people have had like uh, concussions or injuries or they've had stress on their nerve system, parts of their brain can get a little weaker and what happens is the eyes don't focus quite as well. So if you're walking and one eye is kind of a little sluggish and it doesn't do what it needs to do, you can get dizzy, it can cause headaches, it can cause fatigue, balance issues and things like that can come out of it. People that have had concussions often have difficulty seeing, bright lights bug them. The, the brain just gets off and it's not working as sharply as it could. So the eyes are a really big window into the health of the nerve system. So we have a special technology now that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show the video, like the, the commercial for it after my little segment here, but I just want you to understand how we're going to ap apply it in the office. So this is going to be a separate thing. I'm not going to do it on every patient, but it'll be really important for different um, people in the office, like um, kids that have difficulty. You know, I see a lot of kids with on, the, on the spectrum that maybe the parents say, well, he, he, never fo he doesn't focus well at school. And then if we test their eyes and we see that they're following a target perfectly with the right eye, but the left eye is all over the place, well, that kid will have difficulty reading. So they might say he might, he might not be focusing on his schoolwork because he physically can't focus his eyes on the schoolwork. And he says, well, I'm, I, I can't even read that properly, so I'm not even going to pay attention to it. And then they decide to look out the window instead of paying attention to the class. So this, what it does is, there's a, you'll see there's a series of exercises, it only takes about five minutes. Basically you're just following like a circle around with your eyes or you're following something going up and down or side to side. And what it does is it evaluates both eyes and it sees are they tracking properly. So it can pick up weaknesses in certain eye muscles, it can pick up ideas in certain parts of your brain that might not be allowing the eyes to focus and move properly. So when we're doing our care, that can help me uh, measure things. because. In our functional neurology, we have these little tools. This is something called an optokinetic strip, where I'll move like a strip of uh, white paper in front of somebody's eyes that has these vertical lines on it. And so the eye will follow it, and then it'll come back and fix it on the next spot. And the health of that movement tells us a lot about the brain. But you know, usually I'm doing this manually, but with the right eye thing, I can actually get a, like a measurement and objective numbers and things. So um, with this assessment tool, what can happen is we can use it a couple of different ways. I can just kind of use it as an assessment, but if you want to come in, what we do, you can pay for a session to get the analysis, and then you can actually have like a month home, um, home exercise. So if the right eye picks up a weakness that it can be improved, you'll actually get a home exercise thing where you'll go home, log on to the website that you'll have like access to, and it'll actually say, it'll point, it'll shine something on one side of your computer and it'll say, look at that and move your head up and down. And that'll be strengthening the weaknesses in your eye to go back and help stimulate your brain to improve your brain health. So this is just going to be important for anybody who wants to improve their brain health, improve their focus, reading skills for kids. The applications of this are pretty, pretty big. So it would be really important for us because we can do a lot of measurements with it, evaluate things. You can do the care at home, pay for a package, and you can do this up one month. And we, we know if you're doing the exercises daily, and we kind of keep track of it, and then you come back in, and then we can kind of evaluate where your brain is and how your, your eyes are tracking and that kind of thing. So it's something we're going to have in the office. I'm going to show you the, the right eye video after this so you kind of see how it works and what it looks like. And uh, just look forward to that. And maybe in the next couple of weeks after we get it up, when we've tested it on ourselves and figured out how to do it properly, and i got to figure out how I'm going to actually... Do I, do I need to hire somebody to work it or something? I'm not sure. We're, we still things we need to figure out, but I just wanted to introduce you that and just watch the video now. And this is the, the commercial for the right eye, so you kind of understand it. And we'll see you next time.
And he scored a 99 out of 100. It's pretty impressive. Um, I think I've had two people that have done that, the equivalent of it. And, but I mean, it's just obviously this is what he did. Yeah. And yeah. The amazing, the amazing thing about Bright Eye Software and what I love about it is, you know, we're looking at eye movements, we're looking at the slower movements, which are pursuits, which are parietal lobe and sensory motor, and we're looking at the frontal lobe, which is behavioral, which are saccades, and then fixations are a combination of the cerebellum, which is the back of your brain, with the frontal lobe. And, um, you know, what I love about it is, it picks up stuff that the naked human eye cannot see on your bedside exam. And I, I've said this many times, but I literally say this to every patient, it's like, you know, I've been doing this for a long time, and if I want to fly a plane, I'd be a pilot, but it's not a bad thing to have an autopilot. And so we pick up little things, and then we can give a patient an, an activity, which is usually some sort of an eye exercise, it might be a fixation, a pursuit, most commonly surprise, and then we can improve their function. And, you know, we, we know that uh, green is great and orange is a warning and red is bad. And obviously, this is exceptional. So yeah. if, if you take the time to watch his fight, you know, you see his cat like reflexes and you see the other guy just all over the place. And it's just kind of. He like, even framed it though, which is a really good. Cool, uh, <laughs> I, I homeschool and um, I just. Kept noticing that Andrew had difficulties with spelling. He had difficulties with, he hated reading. He, his reading comprehension was terrible. I would read like letters would drumble together and cross and it just didn't make it enjoyable. I'll get headaches sometimes and um, my eyes would hurt. After hearing Andrew's story of where he was in the beginning, then our evaluation looked at all of his visual skills beyond just being able to see 2020, uh, how his eyes work together as a team, depth perception, focusing ability, and then every patient, their initial eval includes going through the right eye functional vision IQ, and then the reading IQ if they have reading challenges too. The circular pursuits were not, not necessarily a circle shape, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the horizontal pursuits, there were a lot of saccadic intrusions or fixation losses where your eyes were Kind of like like losing coordination. They were. That's kind of what the eye movements looked like. Was was really unsteady and and difficulty with controlling. So pursuits were hard to stay on target. Saccades with both eyes were uh, inaccurate and not necessarily going over the same path over and over. And then fixation stability. There was difficulty with holding his eyes steady. So definitely there was a lot to work on in the beginning and. The end result is, was night and day different. It was so cool to see how much different it got as he progressed. I never dreamed, because Andrew goes for his eye exams every year and gets new glasses, and so I never dreamed that there was something that could possibly be wrong with the way his eyes actually work, how they, they're not tracking together, how just that he can't do the things that normal eyes do because he sees perfectly fine. And so there's so much more that, as a parent, we don't even know the full scope of what can go wrong with the eyes. Andrew's percentile scores went up consistently, which is nice to see, um, but also those little little details in each each particular skill set also improved. Um, and, and just being able to show, that's something that I really like about right eye is, I know that Andrew's eyes had a hard time working together, but they didn't necessarily, a lot of people have just heard 2020 is good. All your life, 2020, 2020. And Andrew got to see this is what your eyes are doing when you're trying to read. Kira got to see this is here's a paragraph of text. This is how Andrew's eyes are moving as he's reading. So being able to actually visualize and understand exactly how those eyes are working together was useful for progress evaluations, but also a measurable improvement too. Um, I'm a lot better at spelling. I, I used to just think. Like, I would guess the words a lot, but now I don't usually guess. I can spell a lot better, and I do archery, and I can aim a lot better. Because there's a strong connection between the visual system, the brain, and the spine. And the number one compensation for uh, problems with movements of the eyes 
is going to be in the musculoskeletal system. Uh, I believe that if we are to treat the spine, we need to also understand the system that controls the spine and also the systems that can influence the spine. And the visual system is one of the most prominent ones. By assessing eye movements, it gives us a window into, uh, into the brain. And it's the only system that can actually tap into all parts of the brain. In many cases, we could see things with the right eye system that, uh, that I would miss, you know, by doing a bedside exam without, without the um, clinical input that, that the right eye system brings. Uh, the right eye system has allowed me to, to really serve the patient much better. Uh, and in some cases, serve patients that I would not have been able to serve previously. And what it's done, uh, after 16 years of practice, uh, 12 of those in functional neurology, uh, it's, it's the only system that's allowed me to very quickly and very easily show the patients what I'm seeing. Uh, because the patients understand it, they get it, and they want it, and they want their brain to be better. And this is a great, great uh, window into the brain, it's through the 